the merchant ship by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson the sun o'er the waters was throwing in the freshness of morning its beams and the breast of the ocean seemed glowing with glittering silvery streams a bark in the distance was bounding away for the land on her lee and the boatswain's shrill whistle resounding came over and over the sea the breezes blew fair and were guiding her swiftly along her track and the billows successively passing were lost in the distance aback the sailors seemed busy preparing for anchor to drop ere the night the red rusted cables and fathoms were hauled from their prisons to light each rope and each brace was attended by stout-hearted sons of the main whose voices in unison blended sang many a merry toned strain forgotten their care and their sorrow if of such they had ever known aught each soul was wrapped up in the morrow the morrow which greeted them not a sunshiny hope was inspiring and filling their hearts with a glow like that on the billows around them like the silvery ocean below as they looked on the heaven before them already high looming and near what else but a joy could invade them or what could they feel but a cheer the eve on the waters was clouded and gloomy and dark grew the sky the ocean in blackness was shrouded and wails of a tempest flew by the bark o'er the billows high surging mid showers of the foam crested spray now sinking now slowly emerging held onward her dangerous way the gale in the distance was veering to a point that would drift her on land and fearfully he that was steering looked round on the cliff-girdled strand he thought of the home now before him and muttered sincerely a prayer that morning might safely restore him to friends and to kind faces there he knew that if once at the mercy of the winds and those mountain-like waves the sun would rise above the waters the day would return on their graves still blacker the heavens were scowling still nearer the rock-skirted shore yet fiercer the tempest was howling and louder the wild waters roar the cold rain in torrents came pouring on deck through the rigging and shrouds and the deep pitchy dark was illumined each moment with gleams from the clouds of forky shaped lightning as darting it made a wide pathway on high and the sound of the thunder incessant re-echoed the breadth of the sky the light-hearted tars of the morning now gloomily watching the storm were silent the glare from the flashes revealing each weather-beat form their airy built castles all vanished when they heard the wild conflict ahead their hopes of the morning were banished and terror seemed ruling instead they gazed on the heavens above them and then on the waters beneath and shrunk as foreboding those billows might shroud them ere morrow in death hark a voice o'er the tempest came ringing a wild cry of bitter despair re-echoed by all in the vessel and filling the wind-ridden air the breakers and rocks were before them discovered too plain to their eyes and the heart-bursting shrieks of the hopeless ascending were lost in the skies then a crash then a moan from the dying went on on the wings of the gale soon hushed in the roar of the waters and the tempest's continuing wail the storm power loudly was sounding their funeral dirge as they passed and the white crested waters around them re-echoed the voice of the blast the surges will show to the morrow a fearful and heart-rending sight and bereaved ones will weep in their sorrow when they think of that terrible night the day on the ocean returning saw stilled to a slumber the deep not a zephyr disturbing its bosom the winds and the breezes asleep again the warm sunshine was gleaming again the warm sunshine was gleaming refulgently fringing the sea its rays to the horizon beaming and clothing the land on the lee the billows were silently gliding o'er the graves of the sailors beneath the waves round the vessel yet pointing the scene of their anguish and death they seemed to the fancy bewailing the sudden and terrible doom of those who were yesterday singing and laughing in sight of their tomb 
tis thus on the sea of existence the morning begins without care hope cheerfully points to the distance the future beams sunny and fair and we at the bark or the billows admiring the beauty of the day with fortune all smiling around us glide onward our silvery way we know not nor fear for sorrow ever crossing our pathway in life we judge from today the tomorrow and dream not of meeting with strife this world seems to us as an eden and we wonder when hearing around the cries of stern pain and affliction how such an existence is found but we find to our cost when misfortune comes mantling our sun in its night that the earth was not made to be heaven not always our life can be bright in turn we see each of our daydreams dissolve into air and decay and learn that the hopes that are brightest fade soonest far soonest away these lines were written in eighteen fifty seven and were suggested by the wreck of the dunbar and the writer did not confine himself in particular to a description of that disaster as may be seen from perusal h k end of poem this recording is in the public domain oh tell me ye breezes by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by reuben witter oh tell me ye breezes that spring from the west oh tell me ere passing away if the late chart's bold spirit has fled to its rest where moulders the traveller's clay perchance as ye flitted unheedlessly by the long lost was yielding his breath perchance ye have borne on your wings the last sigh that scat from the lone one in death tell me ye breezes ye traversed the wild and passed over the desolate spot where repasseth in silence sweet nature's own child where slumbers one nearly forgot ye answer me not but are passing away ye breezes that spring from the west unshallowed still moulders the traveller's clay for unknown is the place of his rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain number three the far future early poems by henry kendall this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recorded by alan lawley australia advancing with rapid wing stride shall plant among nations her banners in pride the yoke of dependence aside she will cast and build on the ruins and wrecks of the past her flag on the tempest will wave to proclaim among kingdoms and empires her national name the future shall see it asleep or unfurred the shelter of freedom and boast of the world australia advancing like day on the sky has glimmered through darkness will blazon on high a gem in its glitter has yet to be seen when progress has placed her where england has been when bursting those limits above she was sore outstretching all rivals who've mounted before and resting will blaze with her glories unfurred the empire of empires and boast of the world australia advancing with power will entwine with honour and justice a mercy divine no despot shall trample no slave shall be bound oppression must totter and fall to the ground the stain of all ages tyrannical sway will pass like a flash or a shadow away and shrink to nothing neath thunderbolts hurled from the hand of the terror the boast of the world 
Australia advancing with rapid winged stride, shall plant among nations her banners in pride, the yoke of dependence aside she will cast, and build on the ruins and wrecks of the past. Her flag in the tempest will wave to proclaim, among kingdoms and empires her national name, and ages shall see it asleep or unfurred, the shelter of freedom and boast of the world. I hope the above will not be considered disloyal. It is but reasonable to imagine that Australia will in the far future become an independent nation, that imagination springing as it does from a native-born Australian brain. H. K. End of section 3 The Far Future Recorded by Alan Lawley Silent Tears by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. What bitter sorrow courses down young mourner's faded cheek! Those scalding drops betray a grief within, too full to speak. Outspoken words cannot express the pangs, the pains of the years. They're ne'er so deep or eloquent as are those silent tears here is a wound that in the breast must canker hidden from sight though all without seems sunny day within tis ever night yet sometimes from this sacred source the gloomy truth appears the wind's dark dungeon must have vent if but in silent tears the world may deem from outward looks that heart is hard and cold but oh could they the mantle lift what sorrows would be told then only then the truth would show which most the bosom sears the pain portrayed by burning words or that by silent tears end of poem this recording is in the public domain number five extemper lines early poems by henry kendall this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recorded by alan lawley a morning crowns the western hill a day begins to rain a sun awakes o'er distant seas, Shall never sleep again. The world is growing old, And men are waxing wise. A mist is cleared, A something falls, Like scales from off their eyes. Too long the dark of ignorance Has brooded on their way. Too long oppression stood before, Excluding light of day. But now they've found the track, and now they've seen the dawn. A beacon lamp is pointing on, where stronger glows the morn. Since Adam lived, the mighty ones have ever ruled the weak. Since Noah's flood, the fettered slave has seldom dared to speak. Tis time a voice was heard, tis time a voice was spoken. So in the chain of tyranny, a link or two be broken. A tiny rill will swell a stream, a spark will cause a flame, and one man's burning eloquence has helped to do the same. And he will persevere, and soon that blaze must spread to the corners of the earth, reflecting beams are shed. The few will try to beat it down, but can they stop the flood? Pin up the pinions of the light, or check the will of God? And is it not his will that deeply injured right should overthrow the iron rule and reign instead of might? End of number five. Extemper lines. Recorded by Alan Lawley.
The Old Year by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Old Year It passed like the breath of the night wind away. It fled like a mist at the dawn of the day. It lasted its moment, then backwards was hurled. Another increased to the age of the world. It passed with its shadows, its smiles, and its tears. It passed as a stream to the ocean of years. Years that were coming, were here, and are o'er. The ages departed to visit no more. It passed, but the bark on its billowy track leaves an impression on waters aback. The glow of the gloaming remains on the sky, unwilling to leave us, unwilling to die. It fled, but away and away in its wake there lingers a something that time cannot break. The past and the future are joined by a chain, and memories live that must ever remain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tanner by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Shades of my father, the hour is approaching. Prepare ye the carver for yonder on high. Make ready the welcome, ye souls of Arakan. The death god of Tanner speaks, yonder must die. No more will he traverse the flame-sheeted mountain to lead forth his brothers to hunting and war. No more will he drink from the time-honoured fountain, nor rise in the councils of Yuking Ashar. His voice in the battle loud thunder resembling, has died like a zephyr or running the plain. His whoop like the tempest through forest trees trembling, shall never strike foemen with terror again. The musker hung up on Kokoa is sleeping, and Ataman spirits have gathered anigh to see their destroyer and wailing and weeping roll past on the night-breathing winds of the sky the lines are suspended the motto is broken the canoes far away from the water-washed shore mourn mourn ye wainas the word has been spoken the chieftain can bring ye the weepen no more ye cloud-seated visions ye shades of my fathers awake from your slumbers the trumpet blast blow the moments are flying the mountain misgathers and yonder is leaving his campfire below the struggles are over the cords are asunder ye phantoms hold forward your heavenly light speak on the wings of the sky-shaking thunder and fill him with joy on the path of his flight come downwards a space through the fogs till you meet him Throw open the doors of Arakan awide, And stand on the thresholds, ye shadows shall greet him, The glory of Tanna, the Yuking Shea's pride. Thanked spirits departed, her eyed not your voices, Faint rolling along on the breath of the gale. Thanked spirits departed, Lienna rejoices, Eve answered the mourner, Eve silenced the wail. The midnight is clearing, the death song is ended. The chieftain has gone, but ye've called him away. For he smiled as he listened, obedient descended. The voice in his ear, and the torch on his way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Earth Laments for Day by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Earth Laments for Day There's music wafting on the air The evening winds are sighing among the trees And yonder stream is mournfully replying Lamenting loud the sunny light That in the west is dying the moon is rising o'er the hill, her slanting rays are creeping where nature lies profoundly still, in happy, quiet sleeping, and resting on her face, they'll find the earth is wet with weeping. 
she mourneth for the lovely day now deep in darkness shaded she sheds the dewy tear because of morning's mantle faded she misses from her breast the garb in which the moon arrayed it the evening queen will strive in vain to break the spell which bound her a million stars can never throw departed warmth around her they all must pass away and leave the earth as they had found her but why should gentle nature weep that night has overtaken the wearied world that needed sleep refreshed to reawaken so richer light might burst around the gloomy shadows breaking oh can she not from yonder sky that gleams above her borrow a single ray or find a way to check the tear of sorrow a beam of hope would last her till the dawning of tomorrow and a poem this recording is in the public domain the late w v wild esquire by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c sad faces came round and i dreamily said though the harp of my country now slumbers some hand will pass o'er it in love for the dead and attune it to sorrowful numbers but the hopes that i cling to are withering things for the days have gone by with a cloud on their wings and the touch of a bard is unknown to the strings oh why art thou silent australia the leaves of the autumn are scattering fast the willows look barren and lonely but i dream a sad dream of my friend of the past and this form i can dwell upon only in the strength of his youth i can see him go by there is health on the cheek and a fire in the eye oh who would have thought that such beauty could die ah mourn for the noblest australia a strange shadow broods o'er the desolate earth and the cypresses tremble and quiver but my heart waxeth dark with the thoughts of the worth that has left us for ever and ever a dull cloud creepeth close to the moon and the winter winds pass with a shuddering croon oh why was he snatched from his brothers so soon a weep for thy lost one australia how weary we grow when we turn to reflect upon what we have seen and believe in when harping on promises hopelessly wrecked and the things we have all been deceived in when a voice that i loved lingers near to me yet and a kind handsome face which i'll never forget can i wait to the present and stifle regret can i smother these feelings australia it is useless to grieve o'er the light that has fled but the harp of my country still slumbers and i thought that some bard in his love for the dead would have thrilled it to sorrowful numbers lo the hopes that i clung to are withering things for the days have gone by with a cloud on their wings and my hand is too feeble to strike at the strings oh why art thou silent australia end of poem this recording is in the public domain astarte by henry kendall read for librivox .org. across the dripping witches oh look luxurious night she comes the brighter beauty my luminous delight my luminous delight so hush the shores you roar that my soul may sleep forgetting that love's wild nevermore astarte syrian sister your face is wet with tears 
I think you know the secret one heart has held for years. One heart has held for years. But hide your hapless love, and my sweet, my Syrian sister, that loves white nevermore. Ah, Helen, hope in heaven, my queen of long ago, I swooned with adoration, but could not tell you so, or dared not tell you so, my radiant queen of yore. You've passed away and left me, that loves white nevermore. I start an oath, darling, of eyes that once did weep, what time entranced passion hath kissed your lips in sleep, hath kissed your lips in sleep. But now those tears are all gone, my saint, with many a moan to dead love's wild nevermore. If I am past all crying, what thoughts are maddening me of you, my darling, dying upon the lone white sea, upon the lone white sea? A hush your shores you are, that my soul may sleep, forgetting dead love's wild nevermore. End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. Australian War Song by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Son of the Exiles Men have said that ye were sleeping Hurl Australians back the lie Wet the swords you have in keeping Forward stand to do or die Hear ye not across the ocean Echoes of the distant fray, sounds of loud and fierce commotion, swiftly sweeping on the way. Hearts have woke from sluggish trances, woke to know their native worth. Freedom with her train advances, freedom newly sprung to birth. Despots start from thrones affrighted, tyrants hear the angry tread where the slaves whose prayers were slighted marching draw the sword instead if the men of other nations dash their fetters to the ground when the foeman seeks your stations will you willing slaves be found you the sons of hero fathers sires that bled at waterloo no, your indignation gathers to your old traditions true. Should the cannon's iron rattle sound between your harbour doors, you will rise to wage the battle in a just and righteous cause. Patriot fires will scorch oppression, should it dare to draw too near, and the tide of bold aggression must be stayed from coming here. Look upon familiar places, mountain, river, hill, and glade. Look upon those beauteous faces, turning up to you for aid. Think ye in the time of danger, when that threatening moment comes, will you let the heartless stranger drive your kindred from their homes by the prayers which rise above you when you face him on the shore by the forms of those that love you greet him with the rifle's roar while an arm can wield a sabre while you yet can lift a hand strike and teach your hostile neighbour this is freedom's chosen land End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ivy on the Wall by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Ivy on the Wall The verdant ivy clings around Yon moss-bemantled wall As if it sought to hide the stones the crumbling soon must fall. That relic of a bygone age, now tottering to decay, has but one friend, the ivy, left. The rest have passed away. The fairy flowers that once did bloom and smile beneath its shade, they lingered till the autumn came, and autumn saw them fade. 
the emerald leaves that blushed between the winds away have blown but yet to cheer the mournful scene the ivy liveth on thus heavenly hope will still survive when earthly joys have fled and all the flowery dreams of youth lie withering and dead when winter comes it twines itself around the human heart and like the ivy on the wall will ne'er from thence depart end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Australian Immigrant by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. How dazzling the sunbeams awoke on the spray When Australia first rose in the distance away As welcome to us on the deck of the bark As the dove to the vision of those in the ark what fairy-like fancies appeared to the view as nearer and nearer the haven we drew what castles were built and rebuilt in the brain to totter and crumble to nothing again we had roamed o'er the ocean had traversed a path where the tempest surrounded and shrieked in its wrath alike we had rolled in the hurricane's breath and slumbered on waters as silent as death and had watched the day breaking each morn on the main and had seen it sink down in the billows again for week after week till disheartened we thought an age would elapse ere we'd entered the port how often while ploughing the watery waste our thoughts from the future had turned to the past how often our bosoms have heaved with regret for faces and scenes we could never forget for we'd seen as the shadows or curtained our minds the cliffs of old england receding behind and had turned in our tears from the view of the shore the land of our childhood to see it no more but when that red morning awoke from its sleep to show us this land like a cloud on the deep and when the warm sunbeams imparted their glow to the heavens above and the ocean below the hearts had been aching then reveled with joy and a pleasure was tasted exempt from alloy the souls had been heavy grew happy and light and all was forgotten in present delight tis true of the hopes that were verdant that day there is more than half of them withered away tis true that emotions of tempered regret still live for the country will never forget but yet we are happy since learning to love the scenes that surround us the skies are above we find ourselves bound as it were by a spell in the clime we've adopted contented to dwell End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To my brother, Bethel E. Kendall. By Henry Kendall. Read for LibriVox.org. By Reuben Witter. Tonight the sea sends up a gulf-like sound. And ancient rhymes are ringing in my head. The many lilts of song we sang and said, My friend and brother, when we journeyed round our haunts at Wollongong, the classic ground, for me at least, a lingua deeply read and steeped in beauty. Oft in trance I tread those shining shores, and hear your walk of fame with thought flushed face and heart so well assured, beholding through the woodland's bright distress the moon half pillaged of her loveliness 
of this wild dreamer. Had you but endured a dubious start, you might have won a name with brighter base than I can ever claim. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Waterfall by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Waterfall The song of the water doomed ever to roam, A beautiful exile afar from its home. The cliffs on the mountain, the grand and the grey, They took the bright creature and hurled it away. I heard the wild downfall, and knew it must spill a passionate heart out all over the hill oh was it a daughter of sorrow and sin that they threw it so madly down into the lynn and listen my sister for this is a song the waterfall taught me the ridges among oh where are the shadows so cool and so sweet and the rocks saith the water with the moss on their feet oh where are my playmates the wind and the flowers the golden and purple of honey sweet bowers mine eyes have been blinded because of the sun and moaning and moaning i listlessly run these hills are so flinty ah tell me dark earth what valley leads back to the place of my birth what valley leads up to the haunts where a child of the caverns i sported the free and the wild there lift me it crieth i faint from the heat with a sob for the shadows so cool and so sweet ye rocks that look over with never a tear i yearn for one half of the wasted love here my sister so wistful you know i believe like a child for the mountains this water doth grieve ah you with the blue eyes and golden brown hair come closer and closer and truly declare supposing a darling once happened to sin in a passionate space would you carry her in if your fathers and mothers the grand and the grey had taken the weak one and hurled her away and a poem this recording is in the public domain The Song of Arda by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Song of Arda From Anatanum Low is the lute, my love, beneath the call of storm. I hear a melancholy wind, the memorably mournful wind of yore, which is the very brother of the one that wanders, like a hermit, by the mound of death, in lone anatanum a song was shaped for this what time we heard outside the gentle falling of the faded leaf in quiet noons a song whose theme doth turn on gaps of ruin and the gay green cliffs beneath the summits haunted by the moon yea much it travels to the dens of dole and in the midst of the strange rhyme my lords our desolation like a phantom sits with wasted cheeks and eyes that cannot weep and fastened lips cramped up in marvellous pain a song in whose voice is the voice of the foam and the rhyme of the wintering wave and the tongue of the things that eternally roam in forest and fell or in cave but mostly tis like to the wind without home in the glen of a desolate grave of a deep and desolate grave the torrent flies over the thunderstruck cliff with many and many a call the leaves are swept down and a dolorous drift is hurried away with a fall but mostly tis like the wind without home in the glen of a desolate grave of a deep and desolate grave whoever goes thither by night or by day must mutter o father to thee for the shadows that startle the sounds that waylay 
are heavy to hear and to see and a step and a moan and a whisper for i have made it a sorrow to be a sorrow of sorrows to be oh cover your faces and shudder and turn and hide in the dark of your hair nor look to the glen in the mountains to learn of the mystery mouldering there but rather sit low in the ashes and earn dead hopes in your mighty despair in the depths of your mighty despair end a poem this recording is in the public domain The Helmsman by Henry Kindle, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Like one who meets a staggering blow, the stout old ship doth reel, and waters vast go seething past, but will at last this fearful blast, on straining shroud and groaning mast, O sailor at the wheel. His face is smitten with the wind, his cheeks are chilled with rain, and you were right, his hair is white that eyes are calm and heart is light he does not fear the strife to-night he knows the roaring main ho oh, sailor will to-morrow bring the hours of pleasant rest and answer low i do not know the thunders grow and far winds blow but storms may come and storms may go our god he judgeth best now you are right brave mariner but we are not like you we used to shore our fates deplore and fear the more when waters roar so few amongst us look before or stop to think that heaven is o'er ah what you say is true and those who go abroad in ships who seldom see the land but sail and stray so far away should trust and pray for are not they when darkness blinds them on their way all guided by god's hand but you are wrinkled and gray and worn tis time you dwelt in peace your prime is past we fail so fast you may not last through every blast and oh tis fearful to be cast amongst the smothering seas is there no absent face to love that you must live alone if faith did fade if friends betrayed and turned and stayed resolves you've made ah still tis pleasant to be laid where you at least are known the answer slides betwixt our words the season shines and glooms on ship and strand on sea and land but life must go and time is banned as well you know when out you stand with death amongst the tombs it matters not to one so old who mourns when fate comes round and one may sleep down in the deep as well as those beneath the heap that fifty storms years will sweep and trample to the ground your speech is wise brave mariner and we would let you be you speak with truth and strive to sooth but oh the wrecks of love and truth what say you to our tears for youth and beauty drowned at sea oh talk not of beauty lost since first these decks i trod the hopeless stare on faces fair the streaming bare dishevelled hair the wild despair the sinking where oh where oh where my god end of poem this recording is in the public domain timis and hopkins by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by reuben witter beneath the shelter of the bush in undisturbed repose unruffled by the kiss of breeze there lurks a smiling rose beneath thine outer beauty gleams in holy light enshrined a symbol of the blooming flower a pure unspotted mind the lovely tint that crowns the hill when westward sinks the sun the milder dazzle in the stream that evening sits upon the morning blushes mantling over the face of land and sea they all recall to mind the charms that are combined in thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain
foreshadowings by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson fifteen miles and then the harbor here we cannot choose but stand faces thrust towards the daybreak listening for our native land close reefed topsails shattering over straining down the groaning mast for a tempest cleaves the darkness hissing howling shrieking past lo the air is flecked with storm birds and their melancholy wail lends a tone of deeper pathos to the melancholy gale whilst away they wheel to leeward leaving in their rapid flight wind and water grappling wildly through the watches of the night yesterday we both were happy but my soul is filled with change and i'm sad thy gallant comrade with foreshadowings vague and strange dear old place are we so near you like to one that speaks in sleep i'm talking thinking widely o'er this moaning maddened deep much it makes me marvel brother that such thoughts should linger nigh now we know what shore is hidden somewhere in that misty sky oh i even fear to see it and i've never felt so low since we turned our faces from it seven weary years ago have you faith at all in omens fits of passion i have known when it seemed in crowded towns as if i walked the earth alone and amongst my comrades often o'er the lucent laughing sea i have felt like one that drifteth on a dark and dangerous lee as a man who crossing waters underneath a moony night knows there will be gloomy weather if a cloud track bounds the light so i hold when life is splendid that our hopes are new and warm we can sometimes looking forward see the shade and feel the storm when you called me i was dreaming that this thunder raged no more and we travelled both together on a calm delightful shore that we went along rejoicing for i thought i heard you say now we soon shall see them brother now our fears have passed away pleasant were those deep green wild woods and we hurried like a breeze till i saw a distant opening through the porches of the trees and our village faintly gleaming past the forest and the stream but we wandered sadly through it with the spirit of my dream why was our delight so fickle was it well while there to mourn when the loved the loving crowded came to welcome our return in my vision once so glorious did we find that aught was changed or that one whom we remembered was forgotten or estranged through a mist of many voices listening for sweet accents fled heard we hints of lost affections or of gentle faces dead no but on the quiet dreamscape came a darkness like a pall and a ghastly shadow brother fell and rested over all talking thus my friend i fronted and in trustful tones he spake i have long been waiting watching here to see the morning break now behold the bright fulfilment did my spirit yearn in vain and amidst this holy splendor can a moody heart remain let them pass those wayward fancies waking thoughts return with sleep and they mingle strangely sometimes while we lie in slumber deep but believe me dreams are nothing if unto his creatures weak god should whisper of the future not in riddles will he speak since he answered i have rested for his brave words fell like balm and we reached the land in daylight and the tempest died in calm though the sounds of gusty fragments of a faint and broken breeze still went gliding with the runnels gurgling down the spangled leaves so we turned and travelled onward till we rested at a place where a vision fell about us sunned with many a lovely face then we heard low silvery voices and knelt upon the shore knelt and whispered god i thank thee and will wander nevermore end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sonnets on the Discovery of Botany Bay by Captain Cook by Henry Kendall read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, 
Vancouver, B.C. The First Attempt to Reach the Shore Where is the painter who shall paint for you? My Austral brothers with a pencil steeped In hues of truth the weather-smitten crew Who gazed on unknown shores, a thoughtful few, What time the heart of their great leader leaped Till he was faint with pain of longing, new, And wondrous sights on each and every hand, Like strange supernal versions, grew and grew, Until the rocks and trees and sea and sand Danced mildly in the tear-bewildered view, And from the surf a fierce, fantastic band Of startled wild men to the hills withdrew, with yells of fear, who'll paint thy face, O cook? Turned seaward after many a wistful look. The second attempt, opposed by two of the natives. There were but two, and we were forty, yet, the captain wrote, that dauntless couple throve, and faced our wilding faces, and I said, lie to a while i did not choose to let a strife go on of little worth to us and so unequal but the dying tread of flying kinsmen moved them not for wet with surf and wild with streaks of white and black the pair remained o oh, stout caracactus Twas thus you stood where Caesar's legions strove To beat their few fantastic foemen back, Your patriots with their savage stripes of red, To drench the stormy cliff and moaning cove, With faithful blood as pure as any ever shed. The Spot Where Cook Landed Chaotic crags are huddled east and west, Dark heavy crags against a straitened sea, That cometh like a troubled soul in quest, A voiceless rest where never dwelleth rest, With noise like thunder everlasting. But here behold a silent space of sand, O pilgrim, halt! It even seems to be asleep in other years. How still, how grand, how awful in its wild solemnity. This is the spot on which the chief did land, and there, perchance, he stood what time a band of yelling strangers scoured the savage lee. Dear friend, with thoughtful eyes look slowly round. By all the sacred past, tis sacred ground. Sutherland's Grave Tis holy ground, the silent silver lights, And darks undreamed of, falling year by year, Upon his sleep, in soft Australian nights, Are joys enough for him who lieth here, So sanctified with rest, we need not rear, the storied monument o'er such a spot, That soul, the first for whom the Christian terror Was shed on Austral soil, hath heritage. Most ample, let the ages wane with age, The grass which clothes this grave shall wither not. See yonder quiet lily, have the blights Of many winters left it, on a faded tomb footnote a wild lily grows on the spot supposed to be sutherland's grave end of footnote o oh, peace its fellows glad with green delights shall gather round it deep eternal bloom end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Henry Halloran by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, 
Vancouver, B.C. You know I left my forest home full loath, and those weird ways I knew so well and long, disheveled with their sloping sidelong growth of twisted thorn and cur a jong. It seems to me, my friend, and this wild thought, of all wild thoughts doth chiefly make me bleed, that in those hills and valleys wonder fraught, I loved and lost a noble creed, a splendid creed, but let me even turn, and hide myself from what I've seen and try, to fathom certain truths you know and learn, the beauty shining in your sky. Remembering you in ardent autumn nights, and Stenhouse near you, like a fine stray guest, of other days with all his lore of lights, so manifold and manifest. Then hold me firm, I cannot choose but long, for that which lies and burns beyond my reach, suggested in your steadfast, subtle song and his most marvellous speech for now my soul goes drifting back again a drifting drifting like the silent snow while scattering sheddings in a fall of rain revive the dear lost long ago the time i loitering by untrodden friends intent on low-hanging lustrous skies heard mellowed psalms from sounding southern glens Euroma, dear to dreaming eyes and caught seductive tokens of a voice half maddened with the dim delirious themes of perfect love and the immortal choice of starry faces astral dreams that was yours and if you sometimes find an alien darkness on the front of things sing none the less for life nor fall behind like me with trailing tired wings yea though the heavy earth wears sackcloth now because she hath the great prophetic grief which makes me set my face one way and bow and falter for a far belief be faithful yet for all, my brave, bright peer, in that rare light you hold so true and good, and find me something clearer than the clear, white spaces of infinitude. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lost in the Flood by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. When God drave the ruthless waters from our cornfields to the sea, came she where our wives and daughters sobbed their thanks on bended knee. Hidden faces, there ye found her, mute as death, and staring wild at the shadow waxing round her, like the presence of her child, of her drenched and drowning child dark thoughts live where tears won't gather who can tell us what she felt it was human o oh my father if she blamed thee while she knelt ever as a benediction fell like balm on all a niche rose a young face whose affliction choked and stayed the founts of speech stayed and shut the founts of speech often doth she sit and ponder over gleams of happy air how her white hands used to wander like a flood of moonlight there lord our lord thou knowest her weakness give her faith that she may pray and the subtle strength of meekness lest she falter by the way falter fainting by the way darling said she wildly moaning where the grass-grown silence lies is there rest from sobs and groaning rest with you beyond the skies child of mine so far above me late it waxeth dark and late will the love with which i love thee lift me where you sit and wait darling where you sit and wait
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Eighteen hundred and sixty four by Henry Kendall. Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Davis. Derby, England. I hear no footfall beating through the dark. A lonely gust is loitering at the pane. There's no sound within these forests stark beyond a splash or two of sullen rain. But you are with us, and our patient land is filled with long-expected change at last, though we have scarce the heart to lift a hand of welcome after all the yearning past. Ah, marvel not. The days and nights are long and cold and dull and dashed with many tears, and lately there hath been a doleful song of mene, mene in our restless ears. Indeed, we've said, the royal son of time, whose feet will shortly cross our threshold floor, may lead us to those outer heights sublime our sires have sold their lives to see before. We'll follow him, beyond the waves and wrecks of years fulfilled. Some fine results must lie. We'll pass the last of all wild things that vex the pale, sad face of our humanity. But now... Our fainting feet are loath to stray from trodden paths. Our eyes with pain are blind. We've lost fair treasures by the weary way. We cry like children to be left behind. Our human speech is dim. Yet, latest born of God's eternity, there came to me in saddened streets last week from lips forlorn a sound more solemn than the sleepless sea. Oh, Rachel, Rachel, we've heard the cries in Rama Stranger o'er our darling dead, And seen our mothers with the heavy eyes Who would not hearken to be comforted. Then lead us gently. It must come to pass That some of us shall halt and faint and fall, For we are looking through a darkened glass, And heaven seems far, And faith grows cold and pale. I know for one I need a subtle strength, I have not yet to hold me from the fall. What time I cry to God within the length of weary hours, my face against the wall. My morning brothers, in the long still nights when sleep is willful and the lone moon shines, bethink you of the silent silver lights and darks with death amongst the moody pines. Then, though you cannot shut a stricken face away from you, this hope will come about that Christ hath sent again throughout the place some sign of love to worst and weakened out, so you may find, in every afterthought, a peace beyond your best expression, dear, and haply hearken to the voice which wrought such strength in Peter on the seas of fear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Davis, Derby, England. Ah, often do I wait and watch, and look up straining through the reel, with longing eyes, my friend, to catch faint glimpses of your white ideal. I know she loved to rest her feet by slumber seas and hidden strand, but mostly hints of her I meet on moony spots of mountain land. I have never reached her shining place, and only cross at times a gleam as one might pass a fleeting face just on the outside of a dream. But you may climb her happy choice, she knows your step, the maiden true, and never, when she hears your voice, she turns and sits and waits for you. How sweet to rest on breezy crest with such a love! What time the morn looks from his halls of rosy rest across green miles of gleaming corn. How sweet to find a leafy nook when bees are out and day burns mute, where you may hear a passion brook play past you like a mellow flute. Or, turning from the sunken sun on fields of dim delight to lie, to close your eyes and muse upon the twilight's strange divinity. Or through the night's mysterious noon while sound lies hushed among the trees, To sit and watch a mirrored moon 
float over silver sleeping seas. Oh, vain regret, why should I stay to think and dream of joys unknown? You walk with her from day to day. I faint, afar off, and alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Long Bay by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Davis Derby, England Five years ago You cannot choose but know the face of change Though July sleeps and spring renews The gloss in gorge and range Five years ago I hardly know how they have slipped away Since here we watched at ebb and flow The waters of the bay and saw with eyes of little faith from cumbered summits fade the rainbow and the rainbow wraith that shadow of a shade for love and youth were vexed with doubt like ships on driving seas and in those days the heart gave out unthankful similes but let it be i've often said his lot was hardly cast who never turned a happy head to an unhappy past who never turned a face of light to cares beyond recall, he only fares in sore plight, who hath no past at all. So take my faith, and let it stand between us for a sign that five bright years have known the land since yonder tumbled line. Of Seacliff took our troubled talk, the words at random thrown and echo lived about this walk of gap and slimy stone. Here first we learned the love which leaves no lack or loss behind the dark sweet love which woos the eaves and haunts the morning wind and roves with runnels in the dell and houses by the wave what time the storm hath struck the fell and terror fills the cave a love you know that lives and lies for moments past control and mellows through the poet's eyes and sweetens in his soul here first we faced a briny breeze what time the middle gale went shrilling over whitened seas with flying towers of sail and here we heard the plovers call as shattered pauses came when heaven showed a fiery wall with sheets of wasted flame here grebe and gull and heavy gleed passed eastward far away the while the wind with slackened speed drooped with the dying day and here our friendship like a tree perennial grew and grew till you were glad to live for me and i to live for you end of poem this recording is in the public domain forever by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by nemo forever out of the body forever wearily sobbing o oh, whither a soul that hath wasted its chances floats on the limitless ether lost in dim horrible blackness drifting like wind on a sea untraversed and vacant and moaning nor shallow nor shore on the lee helpless unfriended forsaken haunted and tracked by the past with fragments of pitiless voices and desolate faces aghast one saith it is well that he goeth naked and fainting with cold who worshipped his sweet-smelling garments arrayed with the cunning of old hark how he crieth my brothers with pain for the glittering things he saw in the shoulders of rulers, in the might and the mouse of the kings. The soul hath been one of the idlers, who wait with still hands when they lack, for fortune, like Joseph, to throw them the cup thrust in Benjamin's sack. Now, had he been faithful in striving, and warring with wrong to the sword, he must have passed over these spaces caught up in the arms of the lord a second lo passion was wilful 
and glad with voluptuous sighs he held it luxurious trouble to ache for luxurious eyes she bound him the woman resplendent she withered his strength with her stare and faith hath been twisted and strangled with folds of her luminous hair was it well o oh, you wandering wailer abandoned in terrible space to halt on the highway to heaven because of a glittering face and another behold he was careful he faltered to think of his youth dejected and weary and footsore alone on the dim road to truth if the way had been shorter and greener and brighter he might have been brave but the goal was too far and he fainted like peter with christ on the wave beyond the wild haunts of the mockers far in the distance and gray floateth that sorrowful spirit away and away and away pale phantoms fly past it like shadows dim eyes that are blinded with tears old faces all white with affliction the ghost of the wasted dead years soul that hath ruined us shiver and moan when you know us they cry behold i was part of thy substance and i saith another and i drifting from starless abysses into the ether sublime where is no upward nor downward nor region nor record of time out of the body forever no refuge no succor nor stay floated that sorrowful spirit away and away and away and a poem this recording is in the public domain sonnets by henry kindle read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson to n d stenhouse esq dark days have passed but you who taught me then to look upon the world with trustful eyes are not forgotten quick to sympathize with noble thoughts i've dreamt of moments when your low voice filled with strains of fairer skies stray breaths of grecian song that went and came like floating fragrance from some quiet glen in those far hills which shine with classic fame of passion nymphs and grand-browed godlike men i sometimes fear my heart hath lost the same sweet sense of harmony but this i know that beauty waits on you where'er ye go because she loveth childlike faith her bowers are rich poet with glad perennial flowers elizabeth barrett browning a lofty type of all her sex i ween my english brothers though your wayward race now slight the soul that never wore a screen and love too well to keep her noble place ah bravest woman that our world hath seen a light in spaces wild and tempest tossed in every verse of thine behold we trace the full reflection of an earnest face and hear the scrawling of an eager pen o oh, sisters knowing that you've loved and lost i ask where shall we find its like and when that dear heart with its passion sorrow crossed and pathos rippling like a brook in june amongst the roses of a windless noon sir walter scott the bard of ancient lore like one forlorn he turned enamoured to the silent past and searching down its mazes grey and vast as you might find the blossom by the thorn he found fair things in barren places cast and brought them up into the light of morn lo truth resplendent as a tropic dawn shines always through his wondrous pictures hence the many quick emotions which are born of an imagination so intense the charger's hoofs come tearing up the sward the claymores rattle in the restless sheep you close his page and almost look abroad where highland glens and windy leagues of heath 
let me here endeavor to draw the fair distinctions between the great writers or some of the great writers of scott's day borrowing at the same time a later name i shall start with that strange figure percy bysshe shelley he was too subjective to be merely a descriptive poet too metaphysical to be vague and too imaginative to be didactic as scott was the most dramatic wordsworth the most profound byron the most passionate so shelley was the most spiritual writer of his time scott's poetry was the result of vivid emotion wordsworth's of quiet observation byron's of passion and shelley's of passion and reflection scott races like a torrent byron rolls like a sea wordsworth ripples into a lake tennyson flows like a river and shelley gushes like a fountain as tennyson is the most harmonious so shelley is the most musical of modern bards i fear to touch upon that grand old man coleridge he appears to me so utterly apart from his contemporaries he stands like tenery alone can i liken him to a magnificent thunder-scorched crag with its summits eternally veiled in vapour h k end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bereaved one by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by nema the bereaved one she sleeps and i see through a shadowy haze where the hopes of the past and the dreams that i cherished in the sunlight of brighter and happier days as the mist of the morning have faded and perished she sleeps and will waken to bless me no more her life has died out like the gleam on the river and the bliss that illumined my bosom of yore has fled from its dwelling for ever and ever I had thought in this life not to travel alone. I had hoped for a mate in my joys and my sorrow. But the face of my idol is colder than stone, and my path will be lonely without her tomorrow. I was hoping to bask in the light of her smile when fortune and fame with her laurels had crowned me. But the fire in her eyes has been dying the while, and the thorns of affliction are planted around me there are those that may vent all their grief in their tears and weep till the past is away in the distance but this wreck of the dream of my sunshiny years will hang like a cloud o'er the rest of existence in the depth of my soul she shall ever remain my thoughts like the angels shall hover about her for our hearts have been reft and divided in pain and what is this world to be left in without her. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thungog by Henry Kindle, read for LibriVox.org, by Larry Wilson. Here, pent about by office walls and barren eyes all day, tis sweet to think of waterfalls two hundred miles away. I would not ask you, friends, to brook an old, old truth from me, if I could shut a poet's book which haunts me like the sea. He saith to me, this poet saith, so many things of light, that I have found a fourfold faith, and gained a twofold sight. He telleth me, this poet tells, how much of God is seen amongst the deep-mossed English dells and miles of gleaming green. From many a black Gethsemane he leads my bleeding feet To where I hear the morning sea round shining spaces beat, To where I feel the wind which brings a sound of running creeks, And blows those dark unpleasant things, the sorrows from my cheeks. I'll shut mine eyes, my poet choice, and spend the day with thee, I'll dream thou art a fountain voice which God hath sent to me. And far beyond these office walls my thoughts shall even stray, and watch the willful waterfalls two hundred miles away. For if I know not of thy deeds in darling Kentish downs, I've seen the deep wild Doongog fells, and hate the heart of towns. Then ho, for beaming bank and brake, far-folded hills among where Williams, 
like a silver snake draws winding links along and ho for stormy mountain cones where headlong winter leaps what time the gloomy swamp oak groans and weeps and wails and weeps there friends are spots of sleepy green where one may hear afar or fifteen leagues of waste i ween a moaning harbor bar the sea that breaks and beats and shakes the caverns howling loud beyond the midnight mile lakes and half awakened stroud there through the fretful autumn days beneath a cloudy sun comes rolling down rain-rutted waves the wind eurocliden while rattles over riven rocks the thunder harsh and dry and blustering gum and brooding box are threshing at the sky and then the gloom doth vex the night with crude unshapely forms which hold throughout the yelling night a fellowship with storms but here are shady tufts and turns where sumptuous summer lies by reaches brave with flags and ferns with large luxuriant eyes and here another getteth ease our spring so rarely seen who shows us in the cedar trees a glimpse of golden green what time the flapping bats have trooped away like ghosts to graves and darker growths than night are cooped in silent hillside caves ah dungog dream of darling days tis better thou shouldst be a far-off thing to love and praise a boon from heaven to me for let me say that when i look with wearied eyes on men i think of one unchanging nook and find my faith again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Denehy's lament by henry kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Spirit of loveliness, heart of my heart, Flying so far from me, heart of my heart, Above the eastern hill I know the red leaves thrill, But thou art distant still, heart of my heart. Sinning, I search for thee, heart of my heart sinning i've dreamt of thee heart of my heart i know no end nor gain amongst the paths of pain i follow thee in vain heart of my heart much have i lost for thee heart of my heart not counting the cost for thee heart of my heart through all this year of years thy form as mist appears so blind am i with tears heart of my heart mighty and mournful now heart of my heart cometh the shadow face heart of my heart the friends i've left for thee their sad eyes trouble me i cannot bear to be heart of my heart End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Denny He's Dream by Henry Kendall. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Just when the western light flickered out dim, flushing the mountainside, summit and rim, a last low lingering gleam fell on a yellow stream and then there came a dream shining to him splendors miraculous mixed with his pain all like a vision of radiance and rain he faced the sea the skies old star-like thoughts did rise but tears were in his eyes stifled in vain infinite tokens of sorrow set free came in the dreaming wind far from the sea past years about him trooped fair phantoms round him stooped sweet faces o'er him drooped sad as could be this is our brother now sisters deplore man without purpose like ship without shore 
he tracks false fire one said but weep you he must tread whereto he may be led lost evermore look said another summit and slope burn in the mountain land basement and cope till daylight dying dim faints on the world's red rim will tint this dream for him even with hope end of poem this recording is in the public domain Quay Bono by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Quay Bono A clamor by day and a whisper by night And the summer comes with the shining noons With the ripple of leaves and the passionate light Of the falling suns and the rising moons And the ripple of leaves and the purple and red Die for the grapes and the gleam of the wheat and then you may pause with the splendors or tread on the yellows of autumn with lingering feet you may halt with a face to a flying sea or stand like a gloom in the gloom of things when the moon drops down and the desolate lee is troubled with thunder and desolate wings but alas for the gray of the wintering eaves and the pondering storms and the ruin of rains and alas for the spring like a flame in the leaves and the green of the woods and the gold of the lanes for seeing all pathos is mixed with our past and knowing all sadness of storm and of surge is salt with our tears for the faith that was cast away like a weed or a bottomless verge i am lost for these tokens and wearied of ways wedded with ways that are waning amain like those that are filled with a trouble that slays having drunk of their life to the lees that are pain and yet i would write to you i who have turned away with a bitter disguise in the eyes and bitten the lips that have trembled and burned alone for you darling and breaking with sighs because i have touched with my fingers a dress that was beauty's because that the breath of thy mouth is sweetness that lingers because of each tress showered down on thy shoulders because of the drouth that came in thy absence because of the lights and the passion that grew to a level with thee is it well that our lives have been filled with the nights and the days which have made it a sorrow to be yea thus having tasted all love with thy lips and having the warmth of thy hand in mine own is it well that we wander like parallel ships with a silence between us aloof and alone with my face to the wall shall i sleep and forget the shadow the sweet sense of slumber denies if even i marvel at kindness and fret and start while the tears are all wet in mine eyes o oh, darling of mine standing here with the past trampled under our feet in the bitterest ways is this speech like a ghost that it keeps us aghast on the track of the thorns and in alien days when i know of you love how you break with our pain and sob for the sorrow of sorrowful dreams like a stranger who stands in the wind and the rain and watches and wails by impassable streams like a stranger who droops on a brink and deplores with famishing hands and frost in the feet for the laughter alive on the opposite shores with a fervor of fire and the wind of the wheat end a poem this recording is in the public domain in hyde park by henry kendall Read for LibriVox.org by Diana Schmidt. This and the next poem were written for Prince Alfred's Wreath, published in Sydney in 1868. While in Sydney, the prince was shot by a fanatic and slightly injured. They come from the highways of labor, 
from labor and leisure they come but not to the sound of the tabor and not to the beating of drum by thousands the people assemble with faces of shadow and flame and spirits that sicken and tremble because of their sorrow and shame their voice is the voice of a nation but lo it is muffled and mute for the sword of a strong tribulation hath stricken their peace to the root the beautiful tokens of pity have utterly fled from their eyes for the demon who darkened the city is cursed in the breaking of sighs their thoughts are as one and together they band in their terrible ire like legions of wind in fierce weather whose footsteps are thunder and fire but for ever like springs of sweet water that sings in the grass-hidden lees as soft as the voice of a daughter there cometh a whisper from these there cometh from shame and dejection from wrath and the blackness thereof a word at whose heart is affection with a sighing whose meaning is love in the land of distress and of danger with their foreheads in sackcloth and dust they weep for the wounds of the stranger and mourn o'er the ashes of trust they weep for the prince and the mother whose years have been smitten of grief for the son and the lord and the brother and the widow the queen and the chief but he having moved like a splendor amongst them in happier days with a grace that is manly and tender and the kindness that passes all praise will think in the sickness and shadow of greetings in forest and grove and welcome in city and meadow nor couple this sin with their love for the sake of the touching devotion that sobs through the depths of their woe this son of the kings of the ocean as he came to them trusting will go end of poem this recording is in the public domain australia vindex by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by diana schmidt who cometh from fields of the south with raiment of weeping and woe and a cry of the heart in her mouth and a step that is muffled and slow her paths are the paths of the sun her house is a beautiful light but she boweth her head and is one with the daughters of dolor and night she is fairer than flowers of love she is fiercer than wind-driven flame and god from his thunders above hath smitten the soul of her shame she saith to the bloody one cursed with the fever of evil she saith my sorrow shall strangle thee first with an agony wilder than death my sorrow shall hack at thy life thou shalt wrestle with wreaths of thy sin and sleep on a pillow of strife with demons without and within she whispers he came to the land a lord and a lover of me a son of the waves with a hand as fearless and frank as the sea on the shores of the stranger he stood with the sweetness of youth on his face till there started a fiend from the wood who stabbed at the peace of the place because of the dastardly thing thou hast done in the sight of the day all horrors that sicken and sting shall make thee for ever their prey because of the beautiful trust destroyed by a devil like thee thy bed shall be low in the dust and my heel as a shackle shall be because and she mutters it deep who curseth the coward in chains thou hast stricken and murdered our sleep thy sleep shall be perished with pains thy sleep shall be broken and sharp and filled with fierce spasms and dreams and shadow shall haunt thee and harp on hellish and horrible themes i will set my right hand on thy neck and my foot on thy body nor bait till thy name shall become as a wreck and a byword for hisses and hate end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Ned the Larrikin by Henry Kendall Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. 
a song that is bitter with grief a ballad as pale as the light that comes with the fall of the leaf i sing to the shadows to-night the laugh on the lyrical lips is sadder than laughter of ghosts chained back in the pits of eclipse by wailing unnameable coasts i gather this wreath at the close of day that was dripping with dew the blossom you take for a rose was plucked from the branch of a yew the flower you fancy is sweet has black in the place of red for this is a song of the street the ballad of larrikin ned he stands at the door of the sink that gapes like a fissure of death the face of him fiery with drink the flame of its fume in his breath he thrives in the sickening scenes that the devil has under his ban a rascal not out of his teens with the voice of a vicious old man a blossom of blackness indeed of satan a sinister fruit far better the centipede's seed the spawn of the adler or newt than terror of talon or fang this imp of the alleys is worse his speech is a poisonous slang his phrases are colored with curse the prison the shackles and chain are nothing to him and his type he sings in the shadow of pain and laughs at the impotent stripe there under the walls of the gales the half of his life has been passed he was born in the bosom of bale he will go to the gallows at last no angel in paradise kneels for him at the feet of the lord a nemesis follows his heels in the flame of a sinister sword the sins of his fathers have brought this bitterness into his days his life is accounted as naught his soul is a brand for the blaze did ever his countenance change did ever a moment supreme illume his face with a strange ineffably beautiful dream before he was caught in the breach in the pits of inequity grim did ever the deity reach the hand of a father to him behold it is folly to say the evil was born in the blood the rose that is cankered to-day was once an immaculate bud there might have been blossom and fruit a harvest exceedingly fair instead of the venomous root and flowers that startle and scare the burden the burden is theirs who watching this garden about assisted the thistle and tares and stamped the divinity out a growth like the lyrican ned a brutal unqualified clod is what ye are helping who tread on the necks of the prophets of god no more than a damnable weed ye water and foster ye fools whose aim is to banish indeed the beautiful christ from the schools the merciful wonderful light of the seraph religion behold these evil ones shut from the sight of the children who weep in the cold but verily trouble shall fall on such and their portion shall be a harvest of hyssop and gall and sorrow as wild as the sea for the rose of a radiant star is over the hills of the east and the fathers are heartened for war the prophet the saint and the priest for a spirit of deity makes the holy hierophant strong and a morning of majesty breaks and blossoms in color and song yea now by the altars august the elders are shining supreme and brittle and barren as dust is the spiritless secular dream its life as a vapor shall end 
as a fog in the fall of the year for the lord is a father and a friend and the day of his coming is near end of poem this recording is in the public domain in memoriam nickel drysdell stenhouse by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c shall he on whom the fair lord delphicius turn gracious eyes and countenance of shine be left to lie without a wreath from us to sleep without a flower upon his shrine shall he the son of that replacent muse who gleams high priestess of sweet scholarship still slumber on and every bard refuse to touch a harp or move a tuneful lip no let us speak through feeble be our speech and let us sing though faltering be our strain and haply echoes of the song may reach and please the soul we cannot see again we sing the beautiful the radiant life that shone amongst us like the quiet moon a fine exception in this sphere of strife whose time went by us like a hallowed tune you tomb whereon the moonlit grasses sigh hides from our view the shell of one whose days were set throughout to that grand harmony which fills all minor spirits with amaze this was the man whose dear lost face appears to rise betimes like some sweet evening dream and holy memories of faultless years and touching hours of quietness supreme he having learned in full the golden rule which guides great lives stood fairly by the same unruffled as the oriental pole before the bright disturbing angel came in learning's halls he walked a leading lord he trod the sacred temple's inner floors but kindness beamed in every look and word he gave the humblest levite at the doors when scholars poor and bowed beneath the ban which clings as fire were like to faint and fall this was the gentle good samaritan who stopped and held a helping hand to all no term that savored of unfriendliness no censure through those pure lips ever passed he saw the erring spirit's keen distress and hoped for it long suffering to the last moreover in these days when faith grows faint and heaven seems blurred by speculation wild he blameless as a medieval saint had all the trust which sanctifies a child but now he sleeps and as the years go by will often pause above his sacred dust and think how grand a thing it is to die the noble death which defies the just End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rizpa by Henry Kendall, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Said one who led the spears of swarthy Gad to Jesse's mighty son, My lord, O king, I halting hard by Gibeon's bleak blown hill three nightfalls past saw dark-eyed rizpa clad in dripping sackcloth pace with naked feet the flinty rock where lie unburied yet the sons of her and saul 
and he whose post of watch is in those places desolate got up and spake unto thy servant here concerning her yea even unto me behold he said the woman seeks not rest nor fire nor food nor roof nor any haunt where sojourns man but rather on yon rock abideth like a wild thing with the slain and watcheth them lest evil wing or paw should light upon the comely faces dead to spoil them of their beauty three long moons hath rispa daughter of ea dwelt with drouth and cold and rain and wind by turns and many birds there are that know her face and many beasts that flee not at her step and many cunning eyes do look at her from serpent holes and burrows of the rat moreover spake the scout her skin is brown and sere by reason of exceeding heat and all her darkness of abundant hair is shot with gray because of many nights when grief hath crouched in fellowship with frost upon that desert rock yea thus and thus the fair is rizpah said the spy o king to me but david son of jesse spake no word but turned himself and wept against the wall we have our rizpahs in these modern days who've lost their households through no sin of theirs on bloody fields and in the pits of war and though their dead were sheltered in the sod by friendly hands these have not suffered less than she of judah did nor is their love surpassed by hers the bard who in great days afar off yet shall set to epic song the grand pathetic story of the strife that shook america for five long years and struck its homes with desolation he shall in lofty verse relate to men how through the heat and havoc of that time columbia's rachel in her rama wept her children and would not be comforted and sing of woman waiting day by day with that high patience that no man attains for tidings from the bitter field of spouse or son or brother or some other love set face to face with death moreover he shall say how through her sleepless hours at night when rain or leaves were dropping every noise seemed like an omen every coming step fell on her ears like a presentiment and every hand that rested on the door she fancied was a herald bearing grief while every letter brought a faintness on that made her gasp before she opened it to read the story written before her eyes and cry or brighten over its contents End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kiama Revisited by Henry Kendall. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. We stood by the window and hearkened to the voice of the runnels sea driven, while northward the mountain heads darkened girt round with the clamors of heaven one peak with the storm at his portal loomed out to the left of his brothers sustained and sublimed and immortal a king and the lord of the others beneath him a cry from the surges rang shrill like a clarion calling and about him the wind of the gorges went falling and rising and falling but i as the roofs of the thunder were cloven with manifold fires turned back from the wail and the wonder and dreamed of old days and desires a song that was made i remembered a song that was made in the gloaming of suns which are sunken and numbered with times that my heart hath no home in but i said to my dream i am calmer than waters asleep on the river i can look at the hills of kima and bury that dead past for ever past sight out of mind alienated said the dream to me wearily sighing ah where is the winter you mated to love is decline and its dying here five years ago there were places that knew of her cunning to grieve you 
but alas for her eyes and her graces and wherefore and how did she leave you have you hidden the ways of this woman her whispers her glances her power to hold you as demon holds human chained back to the day and the hour say where have you buried her sweetness her coldness for youth and its yearning in the sleep of your sorrow a witness she is past all the roads of returning was she left with your beauty o lover and the shreds of your passion about her beyond reach and where none can discover ah where is the wide world without her i answered behold i was broken because of this bright bitter maiden who helped me with never a token to beat down the dark i had strayed in she knew that my soul was entangled by what was too fiery to bear then nor cared how she withered and strangled my life with her eyes and her hair then but i have not leapt to the level where light and the shadows dissever she is fair but a beautiful devil that i have forgotten for ever she is sweeter than music or singing said the dream to me heavily moaning her voice in your slumber is ringing and where is the end the atoning can you look at the red of the roses are you friend of the fields and the flowers can you bear the faint day as it closes and dies into twilighted hours do you love the low notes of the ballad she sang in her darling old fashion i i whispered o oh, dream i am pallid and perished because of my passion but the wrath writhed out and the rifted gray hills gleaming over the granges stood robed with moon rainbows that shifted and shimmered red placentant with changes while for the dim ocean ledges the storm and the surges were blended sheer down the bluff sides of the ridges spent winds and the waters descended the forests the crags and the forelands grew sweet with the stars after raining but out of the north lying moorlands i heard the lone plover complaining from these to kimana half hidden in a yellow sea mist on the slopings of hills by the torrents beridden i turned with my aches and my hopings saying this there are those that are taken by fate to wear love as a raiment whose texture is trouble with breaking of youth and no hope of repayment end of poem this recording is in the public domain passing away by henry kendall read for LibriVox.org by nemo passing away the spirit of beautiful faces, the light on the forehead of love, and the spell of past visited places, and the songs and the sweetness thereof. These touched by a hand that is hoary, these vexed with a tune of decay, are spoiled of their glow and their glory, and the burden is passing away, passing away old years and their changes come trooping at nightfall to you and to me when autumn sits faded and drooping by the sorrowful waves of the sea faint phantoms that float in the gloaming return with the whispers that say the end which is quiet is coming ye are weary and passing away passing away it is hard to awake and discover the swiftness that waits upon time but youth and its beauty are over and love has a sigh in its rhyme the life that looks back and remembers 
is troubled and tired and gray and sick of the sullen decembers whose burden is passing away passing away we have wandered and wandered together and our joys have been many and deep but seasons of ailing and weather have ended in longings for sleep pale purpose and perishing passion with never a farewell to say die down into sobs of suppression the burden is passing away passing away we loved the soft tangle of tresses the lips that were fain and afraid and the silence of far wildernesses with their dower of splendor and shade for faces of sweetness we waited in days of delight and delay ere time and its voices were mated to a voice that sighs passing away passing away o oh, years interwoven with stories of strong aspirations and high how fleet and how false were the glories that lived in your limited sky here sitting by runous altars of promise what word shall we say to the speech that the rainy wind falters whose burden is passing away passing away end of poem this recording is in the public domain james lionel michael by henry kendall read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c be his rest the rest he sought calm and deep let no wayward word or thought vex his sleep peace the peace that no man knows now remains where the wasted woodwind blows wakes and wanes latter leaves in autumn's breath white and sere sanctify the scholar's death lying here soft surprises of the sun swift serene o'er the mute grave grasses run cold and green wet and cold the hill winds moan let them rave love that takes a tender tone lights his grave he who knew the friendless face sorrows true often sought this quiet place years ago one too apt to faint and fail love to stray here where water shallows wail day by day care that lays her heavy hand on the best bound him with an iron hand let him rest life that flieth like a tune left his eyes as an april afternoon leaves the skies peace is best if life was hard peace came next thus the scholar thus the bard lies unvexed safely housed at last from rack far from pain who would wish to have him back back again let the forms he loved so well hover near shine of hill and shade of dell year by year all the wilful waifs that make beauty's face let them sojourn for his sake round this place flying splendors singing streams lutes and lights may they be as happy dreams sounds and sights so that time to love may say wherefore weep sweet is sleep at close of day death is sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain